Hello and welcome to my Arts and Crafts. I'm Libby and today I'll be making some backgrounds and then um, I'll be making some cards out of them. Uh, here are the cards I'll be making today. Um, and so to begin, I have brought out my gel press and this fun wave stencil from Hero Arts. I'm also going to be using some acrylic paint for this. So I have two shades of this kind of tealy color. Um, and I'm going to add one to the top, the lighter one to the top and the darker one to the bottom. I'll then just blend that out with, um, a, with, um, a brayer that I have. Um, and sometimes you need quite a bit of paint for this, but paint does also go a long way. So, um, just keep blending and mixing. I did have to bring in some more of that lighter color. I felt like it did get a little bit lost, so, yeah. I brought some more of that back in. And um, once I have a nice thick coat, um, I am actually going to um, brayer off the excess on my um, tool um, to get as much of it off as possible. I'll remove the stencil and you can see that there's some really cool texture and pattern in there. I'm gonna use the other side of this piece and I'm just going to um, transfer that to this piece of paper but then there's still a lot of paint on left on the um, stencil so I did um, spray it with a little bit of water and then I'm just going to put my gel plate over it so that I have something to roll my brayer over um, to press it down um, and I really love this one this one created such a cool texture and it was really really cool I didn't get the chance to use it today um, but I'm hoping I hope I get to um, in a future video. Next, I wanted to play with some color um, and some ink smushing. So I brought in a regular piece of paper and some colors of Distress Oxide ink, and it didn't really work because this paper was too flimsy. So I went and got some of the Tim Holtz Distress um, uh, cardstock for this. And I'm going to be using the colors Salvage Patina and um, Saltwater Taffy. I think these look really pretty together. Um, so I decided to put them onto my work surface, which is actually a glass media mat, which is really easy to clean, especially if we're doing, uh, for doing backgrounds like this, sorry. And so as you can see, it just wiped right up. Um, these colors, when they were mixed like that, they kind of turned gray. So I didn't particularly like that. So I decided to try something different. This one, I'm just going to be using the saltwater taffy color. And I like to dry in between. Um, because it helps save the texture um, on the piece. So I will dry it in between with my heat gun um, and then just pick up that color. You can also do this with a piece of stamp packaging, but a glass work surface works really well for this as well. Um, then I wanted to do another one with both colors, but it was, I've tried to do it in a different way. So I'm going to be adding the saltwater taffy first because I already had it out. Um, and then I will, again, just dry in between um, the um, applications and layers. Um, and then once I have a good amount of ink on this, um, I'm actually going to set it to dry for a minute while I clean up this work surface and grab out the salvage patina ink um, here. And I'm going to add that to my work surface with a little bit of um, water. And then this is mostly dry. You want it dry to mostly dry um, so that the colors don't mix as much. They just kind of sit on top of each other, which is really great, um, which is a really great thing about Distress Oxides. They sit more on top rather than blending. Um, so I thought that worked much better with these two colors because they're so pretty together. They just did not quite mix well. Um, together. So then I just wanted to do one with the salvage patina. So you can see I'm doing that there. Um, and um, I'm just playing with that. It wipes up so easy. Um, and then I wanted to create um, a scene for one of my cards. So I'm bringing in the Hero Arts Layering Waves, I believe it's called. And I'm just going to add some of this Aqualicious ink from Alta New, that's what it's called. Um, and this is going to be the first layer, the biggest layer of this wave. I did try to, I did stamp this one twice because I felt like I didn't get a good enough impression. Um, so I'll do that again. 
and I will stamp it down. Um, I'm just using an air hockey puck, uh, or not puck, but um, tool kind of thing um, to uh, press it down and that just gives even pressure because these are bigger stamps, it sometimes helps with that. The next color is, um, it's Teal Cave. This is also an Altenew, um dye ink. And um, I'm going to add that to the second biggest layer. Um, and then the last color will be Galactic Stream from Altenew as well. Um, so I'm going to do that with the last layer, the smallest layer here. Um, I really love this color combination for these waves. I've used it so many times. Um, so yeah. I will then just stamp that there again. And um, I'm, I then finished this background. So, or I finished the water part of this background. Next, I want to add a kind of sunset sky. Um, so I just brought in a piece of scrap cardstock just as a mask. And I'm, uh, sorry, I'm taking my um, domed foam blender um, and some of the um, mustard seed distress oxide ink there and I'm just um, twisting it um, onto the bottom of the the area there um, and to create a sun and then I'm just going to do some really light blending with the mustard seed on the bottom and then with carved pumpkin I will then bring in a little bit of that saltwater taffy ink um, to kind of tie that in for my background because I will, will be using a piece of the salvage patina, or not the salvage patina, the um, saltwater taffy background um, for that as well. And then at the top, I'm just going to blend a tiny amount on the edge with um, some of the um, wilted violet distress oxide ink, just to bring a little bit more of um, some color into this as well. So just on the edges and I will blend it out mostly but yeah. So then once I have that I just wanted to show you that this wipes up so easy. I just sprayed a tiny bit of water and picked it up with a cloth. It was so so easy. Next I'm going to be using some Versamark ink. I have a little ink cube for this but you could really use um, a big bigger ink cube. Um, I just added some of that and then I took my Versa marker and I'm just going to go along the edge of the water there so that it covers the whole area. And then I'm going to add some sand embossing powder. I really love this embossing powder for sand. It looks so realistic and um, it really does turn out um, great. So I just added some of that there. And I'm going to heat this up with my embossing tool just being sure to um, heat the whole thing and make sure that it's all melted because you don't want any of it rubbing off, um, especially because there's a lot. Next, I wanted to work on my other card. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure out the arrangement I wanted these in. Um, so I'm just gonna show you this really quick. Uh, I thought, I think it's good to show the process of um, a card, but um, I also um, wanted didn't want this video to be too long. So once I had figured out a basic plan, I decided to stamp this first butterfly off the top um, corner there. And I'm going to be using a uh, Versamark ink for this um, to stamp it. I forgot to anti-static powder the first time, so I had to wipe a little bit of away, but it wasn't too bad. I'm then going to be using um, some of the antique, antique gold embossing powder from Simon's Stamp um, for this. Um, so yeah, and then I am going to heat set that, um, so that I don't wipe it off. I could do all the butterflies at once, but I don't want to, uh, wipe it off on accident or anything. So, um, I'm just going to heat set it after every time. Then I wanted to kind of rethink it. I didn't, I wasn't loving what I had. So I decided to go from the biggest butterfly to the smallest butterfly here. Um, I just, that's what I decided there really quick. So, um. Once I had that, I then brought in that second biggest butterfly and placed it um, there. I wanted them to kind of 
um, come from the bottom right or bottom left corner there and just kind of um, flow up sort of um, I thought it was a cool look um, so then I'm just going to be using the Versamark ink again um, adding some gold embossing powder to that and I also heat set it and then I'm going to go um, in with this next butterfly. I wanted this one coming in from the side just to give a little bit of some different angles um, and movement in the card. Um, so I will then pick that up and stamp it with the Versamark again. I like adding the anti-static powder every time just because um, the watercolor cardstock tends to have some more static to it. Um, and then I'll bring this last butterfly off that corner there. It did take me a minute because the, the cardstock was bending and I wanted it in the perfect spot. So once I got that, um, I then will stamp this one with Versamark ink again and I will heat set it as well. Um, with the antique gold embossing powder. I think this gold looks really really good with these colors but you could also um, easily do a silver or a white or something like that as well and I think it would look really pretty uh, too. Um, I then set that to the side and I stamped out this um, this uh, palm tree image. Um, I think the uh, footage got deleted of that. I'm sorry. Um, I will link the stamp set below along with all of the other stuff, but I just decided to do some really simple coloring here, um, and I just played with where I thought the um, highlight should be, um, but there was no really um, rhyme or reason to it. I just um, added some color in here and there. Um, I just used um, some basic uh, Crayola super tips for this, but you could use fancier markers as well. Um, and then I did cut out that with my die cutting machine. So then I wanted to stamp the sentiment here. The first time I didn't do it so well, so I just wiped the embossing powder off and tried again. Um, and then I am going to do that with gold embossing powder as well, um, just to tie in with the other stuff. Then for the sentiment on the other card, um, I'm also using the Inside Kindness Sentiments from Honey Bee Stamps. Um, and I'm just going to... Uh, uh, do that with gold embossing powder. I actually decided to go on black cardstock instead. I found that I liked that better for this card. Um, next, you can see that there's that salvage patina, or not the salvage patina, the saltwater taffy background, and I just cut it out with a stitch circle die, um, but you could really use anything. I thought it just created a nice focal point, um, and I uh, added it with foam tape going off the edge, so I just cut that off. And I'm going to add the palm tree and the sentiment to to this. I feel like I should have done the sentiment in white embossing powder, but I since I already redo did it once, I decided that it would be fine like that. So I'm just going to add that palm tree there, and I'm going to add the sentiment. I had to add the foam tape to the one side so it would stay even there. And then um, I'm just going to add that right under, I'm going to tuck it right there um, on that circle piece. And then I decided to add this to black cardstock to make it pop a little bit more. Um, I'm going to be using foam tape to pop this up today um, because I was kind of in a rush and didn't really want to cut a bunch of pieces of cardstock. So I just decided to do foam tape. Um, and then that um, finishes this card. Um, for the next card, I'm going to be using some gold foil paper. Um, for this, I cut it about an eighth of an inch bigger. I wanted just a little bit of matte of gold to bring in more of that gold, but not too much. So I'm just centering that onto the panel there. And then I will pop up this piece with foam tape as well. I decided to use a gray card base because I thought it went well with the colors. Um, on this uh, piece as well and I'm just going to add it there. I didn't get to use all of the backgrounds today but I, I will hopefully use them in a future video so be sure to um, uh, check those out as well. So yeah that pretty much finishes off this card for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and come back next Tuesday for a new video. If you are interested in any of the supplies I used today check the description box below. 
For more inspiration, please consider liking and subscribing. And for even more inspiration and updates, check out my Pinterest and Instagram account at my starts and crafts. Have a great day. See you soon.